On your mark, get set, go! Just uh, kidding. We're not allowed to run in the classroom. We know that. <laughs> Good morning, super <clears throat> readers. Thank you for joining us in our Valley PBS classroom. I'm Mrs. Nix. Good morning. I'm Mrs. Vang. And I'm Mrs. Hammock. And this is not a place for running. This is a place where we come to learn, practice, and grow, grow our, our brains. brains to become even stronger readers, writers, and thinkers. So let's get started by warming up our brains with some... You know it. Ear training. Ear training. Called Daily Phonemic Awareness. Yes. And today, we're going to turn on those ears really sharp. Mrs. Bing's going to help me out with... We're going to do some uh, phoneme deletion. <gasps> Ooh. That's hard. It is a little bit tricky, but that's okay. And I know you can do it at home too. So here we go. We're gonna take our little sound dots so that we can remember where our sounds are. And we're gonna blend out a word. I'm gonna give you some sounds and then we're gonna take away a sound and we're gonna guess what our new word is. You ready? Mm -hmm. Okay, here we go. So here's some sounds. Listen. S t ah, p. What's our word? Stop. Stop. What if I take away s? What's my new word? T. Op. Top. Great job. Okay, let's do this again. Are you ready? You kind of seeing it? Okay, here's my new word. How about this one? B. Er. Ah. T. Brat. Brat. Okay, what if we take away the b? Sound. What do we have left? Rat. Rat. Great job. Okay, last one. Here we go. Here it is. S. K. I. T. Blend it together. Skit. Skit. And let's take away the s sound. What do we have left? It, kit. Did you see how we practiced just using our ears? Great job with that. Thank you so much. Okay, you know what else that we really enjoy doing? We love to do our song of the day. Let's do our song. So this one is called <clears throat> See the Sunrise. You're gonna need a little extra space. Okay. So get yourself Spread some out. space. All right. And we get your arms ready. We're going to do some wiggles just mm -hmm. like this. Are you ready? Let's I do it. I like this one. I like them all, actually. <laughs> all right, we're looking oh, for the, the sun. Rising. Do you see it out there? I went a little too fast, so now I'm gonna have to slow down. I love seeing you do this with us. Good job. See how easy it is? Just moving our bodies. It's so much fun. to wiggle in the morning. Oh, that feels Love great. It. Brain's going. Love it. Think we're ready to learn. All right. Well, I am ready 
to go over some of our consonant blends with you. So we are learning about the R blends and the S blends. So let's review our R blends and S blends today and then we'll have our friends come in and help us read some words and build some words, okay? All right, so let's take a look at our R blends. They're called R blends because they all have an R in the second spot, okay? So we have BR, br, brown, CR, cr, crab, DR, dr, drum, FR, fr, frog, GR, gr, green, TR, tr, tree, PR, pr, pretzel. And then yesterday, I introduced you to the S blends because they all have an, that's right, an S. S C sk scooter, S K sk skunk, S M sm smash, S N sn snack, S P sp spider, S T st stick, and S W sw swim. All right, hey. Now it's time for us to build and blend some words together, and I need some help. Come on in, my friends. Come I help can me. help, Mrs. Abby. <clears throat> I am excited. so glad. Good morning to you, Tina. Good morning to you, Ricky. I'm glad you're here today because I have some words that I need your help with. You ready to help me? Oh, yes. Great. All right. So I'm going to say the sounds, and I would like you to blend them together and tell me what my word is. And these words have both. Some have R blends and some have S blends. So here we go. Cr op. Cr op. What oh, do you oh, think? Oh, I think I've got it. I've got it. Can I try? Yes, please do. Is it crop? Crop. Yes, very good. A crop is like something a farmer would grow. Very nicely done. All right, let's take a look at this one. I'm gonna say the sounds, and I'm gonna say them in slow motion, and then I want you to stick them together. Here we go. Oh, I gave you a clue. Here we go. St, it, and remember the CK says only one sound. K, st, it. Stick. Is the word stick, Mrs. Hammock? The word is stick, Ricky. Great. You took all those sounds and you made them stick together to make the word stick. Awesome. Can it also be like, I like to play with a stick? It absolutely can be like that. Now, now we're going to do something a little different. We're going to do some building. And so, we're going to change the, some sounds and make a new word. So for this word, crop, crop, I want it to say shop, shop. What do you think I need to change to make it say shop? Oh, oh I, I remember. Oh, I, I do remember. Ms. Good. Hammond. Tell me what you remember. I remember that, that shop, Shop, it has a um, SH. Yes, it does. Very good. SH is one of our digraphs. It has two letters like the blend, but it only makes one sound. And so I can move that down here. And now I have sh op. Ah. Shop. Very nicely done. All right, here we go. Now I want to, I have the word stick, and I want to change it so it says brick brick. What do you think I need to do? Any ideas? Mm, okay, Mrs. Mrs. Hammock. Yes, Ricky. I was thinking it's a brick, so the ending stays the same. So I'm just changing the beginning sound mm. and it has a brr, brr. Could it be like 
brown. So it's a B R. Oh, you're such a good listener. You are right. The ick part stays the same, and it is the B R like in brown. Very nice. And so if I take this one away, I can stick it down here, and look, there is our B R to make the word br. Brick, brick, very nicely done, good job. Thank you so much for your help. Oh, you are so welcome. I love watching you make all these new words. It's just like magic. It is like magic. Reading is a little bit like magic. Now very I'm nice. getting smarter every day. You are, I can see your brain growing. So thank you so much. And now we're gonna look at a sentence that we can read together. <clears throat> All right, so here is our sentence. I can swim, sk, skip. I can swim, skip, and spin. Can you? Now, I need to put a question mark at the end of this part because this part is actually a question. I can swim, skip, and spin. Can you? I bet you can. And now we're going to practice our high frequency words with Mrs. Nix. Awesome. Thank you so much, Mrs. Hammock. And yes, we're going to practice those high frequency words. Those words that we see often in our reading and our writing. And so we want to have some strategies so that we know how to practice them. And one of them is simply reading them. So let's go back and let's look at and review our words for this week. We have the words jump. We did this one yesterday, run, to, and move. So today, I want us to practice this word right here. So the word is to, say to, to, good job. Let's spell it, T-W-O. Do you know what kind of to this is? Because this is one of those tricky words. It's a homophone. It means that there's lots of different, well, not lots of, there are two other ways that we can spell to. How many ways? Two. This is the number two. T W O. That's how we spell the number two. So if you have two friends, you would say T W O when you use that in your sentence. Let's practice it right here. Brad has two black cats. Do you see that this is the same as the number two? We spell it T W O. So we have to remember that. And another way that we can practice that is it's Wednesday. And so we're gonna do whack a word Wednesday. You wanna do it with me? This is so much fun and it's so easy. So I have Mrs. Hammock made for me a, a little whacker. And do you know what she made it out of? I'm gonna tell you. It's a pencil and a pool noodle. Super easy, something fun that you can get and make, and it's not gonna hurt, it's not gonna make a lot of noise. And then we just made a chart with all of our letters. Do you like to practice all writing all of your letters? This is a great way to practice your alphabet. Or maybe you can have an adult help you out. But you make yourself a placemat so that you have all your alphabet letters and you can go through and practice just whacking out all of your words. So let's do two. Do you remember how to spell it? Help me do it. It was T, W and O, just like that. And so you can practice T, W, O, practice your words. All right, another strategy that I wanna encourage you to do is as you're thinking about and looking at a story, we wanna make sure we're asking questions because the purpose of reading a book is to kind of learn some answers, right? So today we have a story that we're gonna to introduce to you. It's about a rabbit and a coyote and it's always fun to look at it and wonder, what is the story gonna be about? Is it going to be a race? Hmm, I wonder who's gonna win. So join me as we listen and see if you can figure out who's gonna win today. Enjoy. Rabbit and Coyote Race, a Pueblo tale. If a rabbit and coyote raced, who do you think would win? Why? Long ago, Rabbit was sitting near a large cactus plant in the hot desert when Coyote came running by. 
Coyote stopped and greeted Rabbit. Hello, he said. What are you doing? I was thinking about how fast you can run, replied Rabbit. I was also thinking that I can move just as fast by hopping. That is not true, said Coyote angrily. I can move faster than any animal in the land. In fact, I am the best at every physical activity. Then let's have a race next week, said Rabbit. You can run and I will hop and we will find out who is faster. I like that idea, exclaimed Coyote. And to make the race even more exciting, the winner gets to eat the loser. I agree with your plan, said Rabbit. But secretly, he had his own plan. That night, he spoke to his family. In order to beat Coyote, you will have to help me, he explained. You can begin to race underground and get a head start. Then you can each pick a spot and wait there. He pointed to his brother. When I get to you, I will be tired. You can pop up to replace me. Coyote won't know the difference. Then he pointed to his sister. You can go even further. And when our tired brother gets to you, you can pop up to replace him. The rabbit continued in this way until he had included his whole family. Then they all raced off underground to wait. On the day of the race, Coyote and Rabbit met by the cactus plant again. Are you ready to race? asked Coyote. Let's race, said Rabbit. You can run across the land as you always do. I will hop across the land as I always do. We'll race to the four corners of the land. We will see who is faster. And with that, the two began the race. Coyote ran east for several days. I haven't had this much exercise in a long time, he thought. Meanwhile, Rabbit hopped behind him. At least that is what Coyote thought. However, when he looked ahead, he saw a rabbit. I'm winning, yelled the rabbit. Of course, Coyote thought it was the first rabbit. He didn't know that it was Rabbit's brother who had popped out of a hole. Coyote turned and began to run north. He ran north for several days. As he ran, he thought he was beating Rabbit, who was hopping behind him. However, when Coyote looked ahead, he couldn't believe his eyes. Rabbit was now ahead of him. I'm beating you! called the rabbit. Of course, Coyote didn't realize that this was Rabbit's sister. Now Coyote tried even harder. He ran west as fast as he could. He ran for several days. Once again, he thought he was beating Rabbit. However, when he looked ahead, Rabbit was hopping in front of him once again. You are a slowpoke, yelled the rabbit. Of course, Coyote didn't know that this was Rabbit's uncle. Turning south, Coyote tried to run even faster. By now, he was completely exhausted. When he finally reached the southern corner of the land, Rabbit was still ahead of him. Of course, Coyote didn't know that this wasn't the Rabbit he had made the bet with. It was Rabbit's cousin. It took Coyote several days to limp back to the starting point of the race. When he finally arrived, Rabbit was already there. I can see that the race was very difficult for you, said Rabbit, looking very relaxed. I guess I can hop faster than you can run. Now come here so that I can eat you. Coyote felt ashamed. He knew Rabbit would not eat him, but he ran away as fast as he could which wasn't very fast at all. That night, Rabbit's family gathered together. They laughed and laughed as they talked about the trick they played on Coyote. They knew that Coyote would never again brag about being the fastest animal in the land, and they were right. That was a great story! It was, wasn't it, Ricky? 
Can I retell the story? Because it is a great story to retell because it started with R Ricky, Ricky, Ricky. I know you want to retell with you live at the Boys and Girls. So if you want to retell to your family tonight, that's a great idea. But you know what else I was doing before I read or listened to the story? I was looking at the pictures and I had some questions. Remember, Mrs. Nix was talking about asking and answering questions this week. And so I was asking some questions. And then as I read, I found some of my answers. So here's that first picture. I was wondering, these were all my wonderings. I was wondering where the, where the rabbit and the coyote were. And I was also wondering what they were talking about. And I was listening to the story. Yeah, I know Ricky's listening. I, I learned that they were in the desert and they were talking about who is faster. So they decided to race each other. Right? I know. That's awesome, right? And then, oh, but look at, here's the next picture. I was looking at the picture, and then I was, here was my wandering. I said, what is rabbit doing? And I went, oh, there's two rabbits. And as I was reading, I found out that rabbit had a plan to trick coyote. I know, can you believe that? He was tricky coyote. And then, no, I know, remember we're not retelling. I, I'm answering all my questions that I had, right? So. Here is that next picture, and here was my wandering. How does Coyote feel when he sees Rabbit hopping ahead of him? Look at that face. Ooh, what was he feeling? Oh, Coyote couldn't believe his eyes. He tried running even faster. That's what I learned from listening and reading the story. Did you guys know that? And then when I saw that last picture, I was really thinking, here's what I saw, because I knew it was at the end, and I was wondering, who won the race? And then what do you think happened at the race? I mean, after the race. So those were my questions I had before I read the story. But guess what? After I read the story, I found out the answer. Can you untell them? I know what happened. I know Coyote won the race. All right, Coyote did win the race. And then what happened? Coyote felt ashamed and he ran away. He did. And he never bragged about being fast again. You're right, because he kept bragging about being the fastest runner. I bet I'm faster than Coyote. I'm pretty fast. Hey, are you bragging? Remember what happened when Coyote was bragging? Mmm, I hope you remember too, boys and girls. So remember, another great strategy is to look at those pictures ask some questions and as you read, you can answer them. All right, now let's get into our writing because I really did enjoy the story like Ricky did. Here's my question for you. Who would you rather race a coyote or a rabbit? Ooh, let's see. I'm gonna have my friends come and help. You wanna call? Oh, friends, help at the writing. I oh. know, I know, I have an answer. Okay, Tina. I would rather race Coyote. Ooh, Tina wants to raise coyote. Do you agree, Ricky? I would not raise coyote. Oh, but Tina, Tina, tell me, because why, why? What? Because I'm <gasps> smarter than that coyote. Ooh, that's <laughs> a great <laughs> response. I am. Because I I'm him. smarter. Oh, and Scooter. I hear you, you're getting so much louder. Scooter says he would rather raise rabbit. Now why? Scooter says because, guess what? Scooter says he's faster than a rabbit. Oh my goodness, I think you Scooter are. Scooter is very, you very are. fast. But guess what? It's time for a book talk. You guys ready to listen to one of my friends recommend a great book to read? Here we go. Good morning, my name is Mrs. McIntosh. I am a second grade teacher at Thomas Elementary. And this morning, I wanna to talk to you about one of my favorite books. It's called Listen Buddy. It is about our rabbit friend, and he has some really big ears, but he has a hard time listening sometimes. One time, his dad told him to go to the vegetable stand and get some squash. Ah, look, he brought a huge basket of wash back. Then he got a little bigger, and his parents told him he could go for a hop all by himself, and they gave him all the instructions. But he got to the fork in the road and he didn't know if he should go left or right. <gasps> I wonder what's going to happen. You're going to have to read our book, Listen Buddy by Helen Lester. You can go check it out at your library. 
Thanks for watching Valley PBS. That was an awesome story. I totally need to check it out because too. I don't think that's one I've ever read before. No. So what a great find. And now I need to know what happens. I do too. Yeah. So thank you, Mrs. McIntosh, for recommending that book because we are all going to go and read it so that we can find out what this to be all about it. I know. I know. You agree, Ricky? Knock, knock. Who's, Who's there? Canoe. Canoe. Canoe who? who? Canoe come and play? Oh my golly, <laughs> Ricky. You're so silly. Thank you, boys and girls, for watching Valley PBS. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.